Hey, we had the new parts come through from the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. That's our aero upgrade for Monaco. Fantastic. And uh, we uh, took a gearbox upgrade as well, if you remember. Oh, great. It's a wet Monaco Grand Prix. As if passing wasn't hard enough, it's now just got even harder. Oh, brilliant. <sighs> Dear me. There's our contract. Yes, welcome to the Monaco Grand Prix, the crown jewel of the F1 calendar. I think, uh, I think it's all looking uh, pretty good. We've got our uh, new rival, Kevin Magnussen. Oh, let's have a look, there's our upgrades. So, the idea is after this one, we're going to get those two little ones there. And then we well, should have a nice big upgrade package coming for Canada as well, which is another one of our uh, favourite circuits. There's the gearbox upgrade. That will help us out a bunch. So that's coming in for Canada, the uh, master cylinder. So I think, without further ado, we should take a look at the championship, shouldn't we? Uh, and after our victory in uh, Spain. We are the championship leader over Esteban Ocon, Charles Leclerc, Pierre Gasly, Sergio Perez in your top five, and then Fernando Alonso, Lance Stroll, Brendan Hartley, Kevin Magnussen, and Marcus Ericsson round out the top ten. Ricardo finally off the mark after his second place in Spain, which was uh, all good because he now moves into second in the constructors behind the uh, Force India team. And still, four drivers yet to score a point when we can get down there and show it. Hello. There you go. Sergei Sorokin, Kimi Raikkonen, and Nico Hulkenberg and Carlos Sainz. And I expect that to be the same story here. So, we are going to go get practiced for the Monaco Grand Prix. We are then going to do our qualifying effort and we will see you on the grid to see if we can win our second Monaco Grand Prix. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That was how Mr Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but still we race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean Sea. There's no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. We already see the lowest average speeds of the season here at the Circuit de Monaco, and they'll be even lower in the difficult conditions today. 19 corners make up this famous two-mile track, and with the rain, it'll be even harder than usual to get that critical heat into the tyres. Don't be surprised if we see a safety car at some point during the Grand Prix. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Paul. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position today, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Alonso, Poole and Bottas, Vettel, Perez, Hartley and Esteban Ocon, Magnussen, Van Dorn, Lance Stroll and Grosjean, Gasly. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Holkenberg, Carlos Sainz and Marcus Ericsson. Sirotkin and Kimi Raikkonen rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. OK, don't try anything silly into one. It's going to be crazy in there. Just do your best to stay out of trouble. So, P5. Um... We will be rolling off today, and to be fair, I think that was probably um, as best as we could have done because we literally threw everything we had at this car, at this circuit with this car, and <coughs> it obviously wasn't good enough. Um, you'll also see it's raining, and they're starting us on soft tyres. Really? So, um, yeah. 
Let's go see if we can win our second Monaco Grand Prix. See if we can beat a few cars into Saint Devant. <sighs> Not gonna lie, it's gonna be a good one. Get ready, five red lights. Oh, they're holding us for a while. And they're out, and then it's lights out of the way we go in the Monaco Grand Prix. And it is pretty reasonable start from everybody. Uh, we're gonna actually sell it right on the inside. Excuse me. Oh, whoa, was that Charles Leclerc hitting the wall? I think Charles Leclerc hit the wall on the outside. Straight up the hill will go Daniel Ricciardo. He's leading this race, and that surprises absolutely no one because he's an absolute AI genius around Monaco. But we're in second place. The rain's still falling as Lewis Hamilton. I think that is uh, who had an absolute mega qualifying. Lewis Hamilton put that um, Mercedes up into third place. It's a bit of a traffic jam in uh, the Lowe's hairpin as we come through Poitiers for the first time. And now into the tunnel we go. And it's going to be chase after Daniel Ricciardo as much as we can on these hyper soft tyres which uh, are kind of like bubble gum really they'll uh, only go so far and only uh, last uh, so long as well but uh, in these wet conditions they are not going to be the easiest tyre to be on as we go into the swimming pool for the first time out to the other side oh big clunker curb there as we come into Rascas and it uh, looks like Ricardo is getting away slightly Ricardo starting on ultra softs. That's a shock. Did he do his fast lap on ultras? You jammy, bloody Aussie. <coughs> oh. That's how much of a jammy Aussie he is. As we head up the hill to uh, Casino Square for the first, for the second time now. The car is just so on edge. If this was dry. It'd be no problem but because it's so so treacherous in these intermediary wet conditions I don't know why we've gone this way why did we start on the soft tire? almost hit the wall on the outside of Poitiers engine is looking a little warm our to go. output will Whoa. be less than optimal <coughs> through the tunnel for first second time down to the chicane and then we clunk over the curb just about get away with it, Ricardo. Just up, uh, just up the road there. I should say as we hit the outside, of the wall on the back, but no uh, damage to the wing. Oh, the car is out sliding through the swimming pool. We're gonna take evasive action. That's gonna give uh, Ricardo a bit of breathing room to come out of the Rascas into Anti Nogue's corner down the main straight for the first time. It also means that we gonna have DRS in the wet conditions. That's that's stupid. The track conditions aren't you improving. Now, that is it's your choice as to whether you uh, want to fit the wets next time you come in. now climb up the hill towards Casino Square. I do agree with um, some of Lewis Hamilton said, uh, ooh, give the uh, ball a little of a nudge on the uh, inside there. Um, at the end of the last Monaco Grand Prix last year, that they need to make changes to this circuit because it's the same circuit it's always been. We need changes to the Monaco Grand Prix to make it a bit more exciting for people. As we come out, oh, tell you what, it, this is the only place here in this Check area MFD where I feel strategy option. confident in this car. Because it's the only dry place there is, so we get a call for a strategy change. What's he want to do? Copy that. A lap early, so we're going to try and do that. Get off these hyper soft tyres a lap earlier than we should. And Jeff, Jeff kind of knows what he's uh, talking about here as we give the curbs a clunk in the swim pool. Now into the Rascas. And now out the Rascas, almost hitting the wall on the outside again. Through Anthony Nogue. <coughs> and now over the start finish uh, straight. We want to pit this lap. Lap times so push are so now. slow. A minute 18. We should be up in the in the minute to minute 10 area. We were doing minute sevens in qualifying, so that's how uh, much these cars evolve and get quicker around this circuit. As we come down the hill to the Lowe's hairpin. Daniel Ricciardo still out in front. Charles Leclerc sets the fastest out, so Leclerc must have had some wing damage off that contact at the first corner with the walls. We come through uh, Poitiers and now through into the tunnel. I, I tell you now, it's 
is becoming a bit of a possession. And, and that's what Monaco is, unfortunately. The AI have been plugged. As we, we get a bit of a screen jolt there. The AI have been programmed at this circuit just to follow each other. Because there's literally nowhere to pass. You wait till we get to Canada uh, in the next video. As uh, here we come for our pit stop. We can take a wide exit and uh, give it the old wide entry into the corner. <clears throat> I'm hoping this is going to work now. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to be really annoyed. Because Jeff uh, made this call. So out here we go. We should come towards the back. Oh, look at how close they get on the uh, exit. That's uh, Hulkenberg there. So we're around about P16, something like that. As we uh, climb up the hill here. Uh, there you are, P17. We're in. So somebody's out of this race then. I've got Raikkonen and Sorokin behind me. Where's Vettel? I haven't seen Vettel yet. Where is Sebastian Vettel? Oh no, it's Charles Leclerc at the back. So Vettel must be in front of me. Wow, where's Vettel? If Raikkonen's behind me with Sorokin, where the hell's Vettel? We're looking at some gearbox wear, trying where's to keep Vettel's your number of shifts that, to uh, Ferrari with uh, literally no pace as we come down to the chicane we're gonna have a look at Nico Hulkenberg here oh coming through excuse me oh I think Hulkenberg's hit the wall Hulkenberg has hit the wall and that is going to cause all sorts of carnage yeah look at that he's got uh, front wing damage he might have suspension damage as well as a uh, Raikkonen uh, thinks oh Kimmy's hit Hulkenberg and I think Kimmy's out now. Yeah, Kimmy's out. Oh, that is... What the hell? Nico Hulkenberg. Kimmy gives him the old ram to get... He's like, get out of my way. What are you doing? I cannot believe this guy is so slow. He's unbelievable. He, something like that will be going on in the, in his uh, headset there. As we head down the hill. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. The, uh, the director there was it? Oh, there we go. Down the inside of Ericsson. Yeah, thank you. That's P15. That's a textbook at Lowe's. At least somebody's trying to make a show of it. Unlike these other morons around me. As we come through the tunnel. I think it's Roman Grosjean in front of us. Or is it Kevin Magnussen? Yeah, it wouldn't matter because uh, here we come. Oh, do the same thing to Hulkenberg. It is Magnus uh, Grosjean. In front of us as uh, what are we doing? There we go, through to back. We're on lap number six. I tell you what, these um, ultra soft tyres are working in this wet conditions here. As we give it, oh, oh that was a bit naughty. A sneaky shortcut, but worth it. We had to get past him, and we had to get past him very, very quickly. Because if it wasn't, he was going to ruin our race. Uh, so we're up at the P8 now as they all uh, start to stop behind me. Stop of Van Dorn in front of us in the uh, McLaren. That should uh, that should be uh, too bad of a job uh, to try and get past uh, the Belgian. The gearbox is now starting to show signs of wear. This is what I was worried about because the gap to the car ahead I don't is one point five did the gearbox seconds. Helped it a lot, which uh, which I'm. Um, a bit salty about it, if I'm being honest. But at least it can now try and get through to the end of this Grand Prix. As long as we don't lose a gear. If we lose a gear in this um, car, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. And that is uh, that is not what you want. To, around Monaco, especially where every, uh, every corner you lose about three or four gears. It's literally, I think, about 8,000 gear changes. In total during this race, right, 8, the car behind has come in to put on the ultra soft tyre. You probably don't That's do 8, the car behind now on the ultra soft. Car, and this does it in two hours at around the Monaco Grand Prix. As uh, we come up to the back of Stoffel, we're going to DRS. He's going to pull into the pit lane, so that's a free spot. Thank you very much, Stoffel. Now, all this time while we're putting these hammers down, there's Vettel. He's right behind Hamilton. And who's out in the front by 20 odd seconds? Daniel Ricciardo with his ultra soft tyres that he started the bloody race on. Prick. 
He might be my teammate, but he's a prick. That's what uh, that's what I think of him. But these ultra softs certainly seem to be working in these uh, treacherous conditions, and that's what uh, that's what we like to see. As we come down to the Lowe's hairpin, through the Lowe's hairpin. It it's such a t it is a full lock corner of the Lowe's hairpin. Unfortunately, you can't take your hand off the steering wheel. That's a that's a failure for the driving test. I want to see if we can get this gap down to. Um, to um, Ricardo, because if we can, we might be able to take the fight to Ricardo here. This car on Ultrasoft is working, and I think we're doing enough heat management in these tyres to dry this track up of sorts. If we give the, the curves a clunk at the uh, swim pool now through the Rass Castle, Ooh, little uh, little twitch there from uh, the back end of the car through the Rass Cast. As we come to the line, lap number nine, fastest right, lap of the race. That's, that's going to worry Ricardo now. Now that we've done the fastest lap of the race, that might worry Ricardo because we've gone about a second faster than we did on Hypersofts. And that says something when we're a second faster on Hypersofts than the Hypersofts on the Ultrasofts. Sorry, there's a lot of Hyper Ultra stuff going on here. Okay, the it's, gap behind uh, is 5.9 seconds. It's all very technical, it's all very bra blase, as they say. We've come through Poitiers, now down to the tunnel. Once you get through the tunnel, it'll be the Nouvelle Chicane on the other side. Otherwise, you'd be flying down to the back. That would be an interesting idea. What if they took this chicane out, put a DRS zone down to the back? Be an idea. That'd be an idea indeed. Because uh, Monaco only has one DRS zone, and it sucks. See, so you're, you're on the power here, but the car in front always got the advantage. No one can make a pass into uh, Sandovart as we set another that was fastest, the fastest lap, of the, lap of the race. Keep we this are up. Really putting the pressure down on Daniel Ricciardo here now. I think we've got the gap down to around about... You're pulling out a second a lap on the car behind. 21 seconds, 21, 20 seconds, something like that. It's it's going to be really, really close. There you are, it's 21.1 seconds. That pit stop around here requires about 20.9 seconds. So, 20 and a half seconds, something like that. So we're close. We are extremely close. Oh, we've got a retirement. Who, who's that? Is that the man, Gasly? I think that's my man. Oh, he's hit the wall pretty hard as well. That's, uh, I think that is my man, Gasly. Yeah, it is. His horrible luck continues from uh, when we were in the uh, Red Bull. Sorry, Toro Rosso. We're in the Red Bull now. Brendan Hartley seems to get all the luck in that team with that car. I think Gasly should be uh, promoted to my seat when uh, when I leave. Hey, maybe that's an idea for F1 2019. As we, well, he does have fastest lap that time, but the gap is now 20.8 seconds. It is really getting close. And I still can't believe Ricardo's gone all this way on these damn ultra soft tyres. It's uh, unbelievable that he's uh, done that as we... Whoa! 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 Bitch! I punch you! Whoa! Jesus, what's that? What's that to your blood? Jeff, where are you? Jeff, what I need to come in next, I need uh, four fresh tyres. And uh, and a clean pair of shorts. <laughs> if you don't mind, because that, uh, that was a tank slapper. That was a tag slapper and a half. Good lord. Oh, no one's going to know how scared I was at that uh, moment, except my laundry man, maybe. That was unbelievable. How did we save that? But that that's the, that's the thing about Monaco. You can't push. Well, you can push, but you can't push too much because look what's waiting for you on every corner. A barrier of some description. 
That is... Oh, that was utterly, utterly... I cannot believe we actually the gap behind us is that six point zero seconds. that moment. It, it's ridiculous how we managed to do that. You see we're taking it carefully through the... Uh, through uh, Casino Square now, can't you? <laughs> We set the fastest first sector of anybody of the Grand Prix. Let's see if we can follow that up. If we can get pump in another fastest lap, just as Ricardo's about to do uh, his pit stop. I think he's coming in this lap. He's got to come in because uh, he's got to put the Hypersoft tyre on. He's going to be on the worst tyre possible as we go a little deep into the chicane. Now down on the way to... Uh, to back through to back we come do we set the fastest uh, second sector no we don't we pretty much burned off our excess sector. fuel we'll be back on target soon and don't wait too long to turn the engine well. down Jeff tells me we pretty much uh, burned off our fuel we get really deep into to Raskas now into Anthony Nogue and yeah it's uh it does look like we do set the fastest lap of the race wow we had a Donkin final sector, absolutely storming final sector from ourselves. We uh, we know when to push, and we know always. Oh, we give the ball on the inside a really hard clout. That's uh, that's not good in Casino Square. Now down to Lowe's hairpin. And here we go. Give it the old full opposite lock. You wouldn't think in a small cockpit you can get these two hands, these two hands like this, and give them the full treatment like that. I've known some drivers to actually take their hand off the wheel to just to make sure they get the full lock. They do in Formula E, and Formula E are coming to this circuit later in the year. That is something you, uh, if you haven't watched the Formula E race around Monaco, do watch it, because that is something to see electric cars go around this circuit. It's uh, absolutely incredible. Ricardo still has a pitted. What is going on in the world of Daniel Ricardo? Okay, we're, we're monitoring keeping, somewhere uh, on the ICE. Day. Be aware that, that we will start to, to see a loss of power. We're into sand device, lap 14. Ricardo's got to pit soon. If he doesn't pit, well, he has to pit because he got to put the fucking uh, Hypersoft tyre on. But he's got to pit more sooner than he thinks. He's uh, on the other side of the area here. He's just going through the tunnel now. We set the fastest first sector again as we uh, go through the Lowe's hairpin. Now down uh, the hill here into Poitiers. Ooh, nice raindrop on our uh, camera there. Hopefully that'll uh, disappear in, uh, in a bit. I'm surprised we haven't had a call yet to put... Um, the intermediates on us. Here comes Ricardo. So this is going to be his pit stop now. So he's decided now is the time to get off these ultras and put the hypers on. We have got to put in an absolute storm. We've got to pump in an absolute mega lap. Where are we? It's going to be close here. I think we might just be fighting all the way up the hill here into Casino Square. If we're not careful. He's come out in the leader. I think that was us in the background, wasn't it? Yeah, it is. Here we come. So we're flying through Sandoval now. So there's the gap. He had just enough in his okay, pocket. Okay, need some energy harvesting. Reduce to, ERS uh, deployment. To do something. That's incredible, folks. That's that's totally incredible. So now we've got to get to work because our Ultrasofts are really, really warm. And his uh, Hypersofts are still on the cold side. So we've got to try and do something about Daniel Ricciardo here before he disappears off into the distance. Because if he does that, he wins the Monaco Grand Prix. And like I said earlier, Ricciardo's AI around Monaco is unbeatable at times. You could, you could have a lap start on him and still beat you. That's how good he is. We have five laps of fuel remaining. Oh, we get a warning track limit. So we're right at the back of Ricardo here, right into the Rascas. 
Oh, give him a nudge as well. Excuse me. Just let you know we're here. The bulls are fighting each other. The bulls are fighting each other on the streets of the Principality. As, oh, big slide through Sandoval. That's going to make him get away. The gap to the car behind is 9 Everything we can now at this car to try and get back up on it. We give the wall a clout on the outside of Casino Square. God, can't keep that up or else, uh, we're going to end up with no car left. I would like a bit of car left if you don't mind. We've got to take this car to Canada. Certainly would like a bit of engine left if that's uh, okay with you. As we come out of the Poitiers corner and now down into the tunnel. I might not it should be Poitiers. I should have pulled up a map of Monaco just to make absolutely sure. I know this is the Nouvelle Chiquet. That we do know. And this is back coming up. Oh, a little kiss on the wall on the outside to back and we come through the swimming pool now. Give the corners a big old clout. He's right there. I don't know why we got DRS. DRS does not work around this circuit. As we give the older opposite lock treatment. Alonso still in third place. I think he's a lonely, lonely third place for Fernando Alonso as we head up the hill to uh, Casino Square for the 17th time. It's nice because we're actually driving well around Monaco for once. We've got a good car as well. I said the fastest uh, first sector of anybody. That tells you how much our car is reacting to these ultra soft tyres. They are just absolutely glued. As we come through Poitiers and now into the tunnel. Can Ricardo hold up to this pressure? I hope he can. Because uh, at the moment we're bringing the Bulls home in the 1 2 position. Although that was a better exit for us from the uh, Nouvelle Chicane into the back. We're right on the back of him. I tell you what, this is going to be close. There's going to be a move done somewhere. Where's this move going to be done? It's going to be done, I think, into Rascas. It's going to be done. Oh, there was... Oh, 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 he's hit the wall. Ricardo's hit the wall. I think we made contact with each other. Oh, dear. Christian will not be happy with that. I don't think Jerry Hallowell will be happy with that. But look, here comes Ricardo back for some more. He wants a bit more as we go to Sandoval side by side, but we take the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix. It may not have been conventional, but it was more than enough to get the job done. Whew. Now we've got to defend from the most dangerous AI in the world. That is what we've got to do. <laughs> and that's not easy, folks. Let me tell you now how easy that is. That's like light rain will stay going with us for at least twenty minutes, maybe more. Light folded. rain is here to stay. While the other guy has like a car that's better than yours, and he doesn't have it blindfolded. That that's how bad it is. Although to be fair, look at it. We are pulling away. So I, I wonder if when he hit clout with the wall, did he have some wing damage? If he's got wing damage, that's uh, going to help our cause a lot. We've only got two laps think, of fuel uh, left. A healthy Daniel Ricciardo car beats us any time, and we were pulling away that much. We've actually pulled Alonso, uh, so we don't need to worry about Alonso as we uh, go on to lap 19, two to go. Through Sandoval, we're leading our teammate almost, by ooh, two did touch the wall two again. seconds. It is such a compact circuit. I do believe, since um, since our result with uh, Toro Rosso, that we have got better at Monaco. It It is one of the, along with Singapore, it's one of the most difficult circuits on the game to truly, truly get right. But when you do get it right, God, it's a good feeling Let's when you get it right. Let's use some of this energy. Increase the ERS deployment. I mean, you saw the uh, elation on our face when we won our first Monaco Grand Prix ever in Korea last year. Uh, last season, I should say. It's going to be just as sweet, this victory. Oh, oh yeah. 
Jeff, are those uh, shorts still on order? <laughs> Can I tell you now? We're, as much as we're trying to win this Monaco Grand Prix, we're trying to throw it away at the same time. But in saying that, oh, you big slide out of the uh, anti no corner and we come to start the final lap. Uh, what was I saying? This is your final uh, lap. Final lap of the race. I got lost in my train of thought there. Oh, yeah. The, um, the Red Bull cars do go fantastically around this circuit. It is, it's almost like the circuit is just made for them with their sort with their chassis and their lack of power that they have. But next year with the Honda engine, we're not going to be able to run in this engine mode yeah, much longer. We're about, about to uh, over target. Drop up. down to mix too soon. Just look like Ricardo's falling into the clutches of Alonso, but I think he'll uh, hold on for second place. Unless we throw it away somewhere, we uh, end up not coming home first place. But we're going to stick it down in lead and make sure we can uh, get to the end of this uh, race now. Because I think we've uh, I think we've done the job here. As long as we can get through the swimming pool in one piece, bring her home. We're there. So we've come through the swimming pool for the final time. Make sure we hit our marks. Yep, that's it. That should be all. Get to Raskas ride a little deeper than what I wanted, but that's okay. Through the Anthony Lowe's corner for the final time. It's the second victory around Monaco for us, and bring it on! Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Superb driving. That's the race win. There is no better feeling than winning a Monaco Grand Prix. Brilliant stuff from Red Bull today. What a superb victory. So out, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, I think the track conditions just really suited their car today. Wind, track temperature, you name it. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature. So the more easily you can keep them there, the better your race tends to go. And that's exactly what happened. Their car just looks so comfortable out there. And I can see now the drivers are making their way out. We need Red Bull fighting at the front. They do an incredible amount for Formula One. And that's another winner's trophy heading back to Milton Keynes. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Paul increases their championship lead. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? I have to give it to Paul. They demonstrated a very delicate touch in close proximity to other cars, as well as showing a lot of maturity and patience in difficult situations. And here's how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Red Bull moved to the top of the table. There was also a strong showing from the Mercedes team today as they make their way up the standings. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Until next time, though, goodbye. Oh, there's no better feeling than standing on that podium shaking hands with Prince Rainier. It's, it's just the best feeling in the world. We win our second Monaco Grand Prix ever. That's all the, all the games we've done, and finally we, we've won two in the, the same game. Ricardo finishes second for our Red Bull 1 to Alonso. Hamilton, Vettel, wow. They brought it home uh, nicely, didn't they, for fourth and fifth? Hartley, sixth. Charles Leclerc and Upfish, seventh. What an effort from Charles. He must have passed like a load of the field. Uh, Perez, Magnussen, and Bottas uh, round out the field and uh, two DNFs. Gasly and Raikkonen. So I think after all that excitement. We need to go have a chat with Claire because she, no doubt she's going to have a brilliant question to ask us about how it feels to win around the streets of the Principality of Monaco. Great Here we go. There today. How do you think it went? How do you think it went, you silly bid? It doesn't get much better than a win. Uh, it actually does doesn't. It? And uh, I've got to be honest, it is an absolute thrill to win around this circuit. And we've really got to compliment the aero package that came 
You were cutting your way through the field. Well, I wasn't really cutting my way through the field, but, uh, you know, we started fifth, we finished first, so I suppose you, each their own. But yeah, let's praise that air road again. You must be thrilled to be up on the board. Thrilled isn't the word. I'm about ready to do uh, hoops out there, but again, the aero package, man. You must be ecstatic with they are farming. ecstatic. But I'm just glad I can live up to the expectations of these guys in this team. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your time. Uh, I think we've schooled Ricardo and uh, Magnuson today. Properly schooled them. You can call me Sir. That's how bad you both got schooled. Ah, uh, lovely. Do we get a bonus after this race weekend? Yes, we do. 1,058 resource... 1,452 resource points. Gotta love it. Got to love it. Fantastic podium. Well done. Keep pushing like this for the rest of the season. Thank you, Claire. No, you're Emma. Come on, Ian. It's been five seasons. You used to know who's who by now. You hit your last team goal. Well done. Hit our last team goal. Yay! Development, and it won't hurt when it comes to right, let's see what we can do R&D wise. Well, the first thing we're going to do, because we did buy the other upgrade after qualify, uh, practice. So we'll get the other one. So we've got two little aero upgrades coming for Canada. Fan Dabby Doozle lose. Can we buy 1,034, 1,061? By my maths, that means we can buy that. So let's buy it and have Red Bull as the best chassis on the grid like they should be. Have it ready for Austria. So that just leaves that power unit right there. We didn't buy it. Why didn't I buy it? Yes, develop it. Please. Thank you. Next. So what we still got to buy, we got still got to buy two ultimate air or upgrades, which you can't unlock until we get uh, the two little ones out of the way. But I reckon that's going to put us close to being up towards the top of the field there. Close to that Williams and that uh, Sauber. Six races, and we got to have these on for one more. And there's the points. Still four with a goose egg. Sorokin, Raikkonen, Sainz and Hulkenberg. But that's going to do it for this one. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy the Monaco Grand Prix as much as I enjoyed the Monaco Grand Prix. Leave a like if you did. It does help me out a ton. You can subscribe for daily F1 2018 and NASCAR Heat Free Career Mode as long as other live streams, which should be started up again pretty soon. So until then, thank you all for watching. I hope you all uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And we will hopefully see you guys for the Canadian Grand Prix. Uh, where we should have a nice big upgrade coming our way. Take care.